Hello, everybody, and welcome to 2019's first Octatrack video. So I thought I'd be a little ambitious with our first video and cover something that um, I think a lot of you have requested over the last year or so. And uh, we're finally going to get to it, which is incorporating the Octatrack with the computer. So um, forgive me if I forget to look at this camera. I'm not used to being recorded. This is what I look like. I've done a lot of videos of me pointing at this thing, so now we have a bit more of a wide perspective. Anyway, so if you have thought about using the Octatrack in tandem with the computer, um, this video is for you. I, uh, I made this with the intention of perhaps dissuading you from choosing just one thing or the other. I think sometimes we put um, limitations on ourselves, and limitations can be helpful, but at the same time, um, if they're getting in your way, then they're not helpful. So <laughs> pick your limitations consciously, is what I'll say. Um, so let's just go through a general overview of what I'm working with here. Let's uh, start with a quick rundown of my setup. Um, audio hardware-wise, I have an audio interface, which is taking inputs from my synthesizers, my guitars, um, this particular synth is plugged into a mixer behind me, and then that mixer is routed around the room <laughs> into the audio interface. Um, what that lets me do is <coughs> do some preliminary mixing. I have um, a small effects chain, um, like a single reverb pedal, and um, I can sort of mix that stuff. I can plug my phone into the other side of the mixer um, and then sample that into my computer. Um, what I wanted to achieve with this particular setup was to allow my computer to be the heart of the operation because um, I've come to realize that production-wise, like the computer is where it's all going to reside. Um, I enjoy playing with the Octatrack and the sounds that it makes, but ultimately it's on the computer that I'm going to be or, uh, arranging things, um, doing more detailed work, putting on effects, automation, things like that. So. I want everything to pass through the computer in some form so that I can take the stems later on. So um, I have these inputs. They go into my audio interface, and then I have them routed via send on Ableton. If you notice, there's a send B at the very end, which allows me to take any instrument that I have set up um, in my session and bus it to the Octatrack. So, in hardware terms, that's output 3.4 going into input CD on the Octatrack. And then from there, uh, I have my input CD set for all of, my, um, all of my tracks that I plan on sampling too. So uh, what am I trying to accomplish here? Well, um, the goal is to be able to take Something that I enjoy, um, just like something that I play around with on, uh, in Ableton, condense it to maybe a two-bar figure, and then having everything synced up, uh, sample that in and chop it up. So now I'm just going to record, and, um, and then I'll pick something out of that. All right, that sounds pretty lame, but let's just keep it. I have it sending into the Octa Send, as you can see. And then over here, all I do You can already hear it playing, um, and it's playing at a pitch lower because... Alright, cool. So, let me just boost it a little bit.
And so yeah, that's the general workflow of how this would uh, be a productive session. And so once I have it in here, I can mute that side, but then I also have the piece that originated it and I can play with it after the fact. The goal here is also to minimize the amount of time between producing the beat and writing a lyric to the beat. So that's just a quick rundown. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I'm still figuring out uh, what works best for me as well. Um, but I figured I would just take the uh, inspiration from uh, this setup working and then um, maybe build on it in following weeks and see, uh, see what I can come up with. Um, other things to remember, um, there are some settings that you should um, remember to set up, um, starting with Ableton. Let's go over here. If you go to your preferences, um, make sure that in MIDI, whatever you have, um, sending MIDI to your Octatrack, and you do have to use um, MIDI cables for that. The Octatrack does not accept sync or transport information via USB until maybe Overbridge, but I'm pretty sure that's a myth at this point. Um, so yeah, just if you're sending MIDI out from your interface, make sure you're also receiving it via the Octatrack. So if you go to MIDI, control, uh, MIDI sync rather, um, and make sure you have clock and transport set to send and, or set to receive. Um, you can send your clock information, your tempo from your Octatrack as well. Um, but I don't think you can do them at the same time because if you have it set to receive, it's just gonna be, you can see here, that it's just gonna say exterior sync, um, no matter what. Another thing to keep in mind is you cannot overdub pickup machines while um, there's an external source of tempo. I think there's something to do with um, how the Octatrack processes tempo changes, um, that it doesn't allow you to um, overdub while it's receiving sync from an external source. So just remember that. Um, if you want to use the pickup machine, you can do that. Just make sure that, uh, I mean, you're going to have to deal with some issues of having um, having to manually sync up your um, session with your Octatrack setup, but um, it's definitely viable. Just go to your setup, make sure that your input CD is set to the, to the channel that you have sending out from your uh, computer, and you can go ahead and overdub any number of things. Um, I could overdub my voice, I could overdub like synths and whatever. Oh, and uh, yeah, th if, if you didn't know already, the transport section is really important because it allows you to receive MIDI um, start-stop commands. So you can actually, I can't demonstrate it here, but I, if I pressed play um, now, it would start the session um, at the same exact time. And I think the Octatrack actually speeds up a little bit to compensate for lag as well, so it's a pretty good system. Um, and I highly recommend you try it out. Um, it takes a at least four quarter inch cables to uh, to set this up, or if you're working with, um, you know, at least a, a pair, two pairs of left right um, cables to get this particular setup running. Um, but it can be really fun, and um, it gives you ult like it gives you infinite material to work with um, for sampling. So uh, hope you guys learned something, and see you next week. Uh, thanks again, by the way, for uh, for being fans and watching this video and other videos like it. I definitely wouldn't be doing this if I didn't see like a steady stream of people just like getting interested in the Octatrack and telling me that I'm helping them out. So it's really cool to know that uh, what I'm doing is actually uh, making a difference. So um, thank you so much for following. We're almost at a thousand followers now, which is crazy considering like the Octatrack community. I don't think is. <laughs> necessarily that big to begin with. So um, yeah, many thanks and uh, stay tuned for next week.